Thank you very much for the opportunity to present our case, Machine Learning, Ethics and Change Management, a data-driven approach to improving hospital observation unit operations as a finalist in the INFORMS case competition. My name is Desi Pachamanova, and I'm Professor of Analytics at Babson College. I'm Vera Tilson. I'm a Professor of Operations Management at the Simon School, University of Rochester. And I'm Keely dwyer a physician and the medical director of an observation unit at an affiliate hospital of the University of Rochester Medical Center. We are very excited to share this case with our community. The case is based on a real event. It follows the process Dr. Keely dwyer who is the protagonist, Dr. Kelly, in our case, follows as she tries to make sure that only the most appropriate patients are transferred from the emergency department to the observation unit she manages. The case is short. It's about five pages, only about 2,000 words and a few diagrams. However, it covers three different areas, predictive analytics and machine learning, operations, and change management in healthcare. It can be used to teach a multitude of topics, which we have listed here and will describe in more detail during this presentation. We consider the following the core strengths of our case. It is multidisciplinary, grounded in practice. It provides rich context, realistic data that was sampled from actual hospital data that was provided to us and then modified for teaching purposes, as well as a variety of instructor resources. As I mentioned, the case is short, so students can read it quickly. However, the teaching note is extensive and offers instructors the flexibility to adapt this case to a variety of settings from quantitatively oriented machine learning courses to qualitatively oriented operations management courses. For example, an analytics instructor may choose to use the code and data we provide to teach a session on creating predictive models to identify which patients are most appropriate for the observation unit, whereas an operations management instructor may choose to use our operational models to teach about Little's Law as well as change management challenges that often accompany process improvement initiatives. In the rest of the presentation, we will provide some background on observation units. We'll describe the case scenario and the problem to be addressed. We'll talk about the main themes and the pedagogical value, the resources provided with the case, and share some of our classroom experiences and student reactions. In an effort to contain growing healthcare costs, observation level of care for hospitalized patients was created in 2013 by CMS. This growing hospital patient population has pushed more and more hospitals to expand their bed capacity by building observation units. National estimates are that by 2050, hospital capacity must grow by 72% to meet projected aging population needs. Observation units are used primarily for two purposes. One, for patients who have undergone surgery in the hospital and are expected to need only a short stay, 24 hours or less. And two, for patients who present to an ED with less severity and complexity of illness, but physicians need more time to figure out whether the patient will require an inpatient hospitalization or can be safely discharged home quickly. The units are designed to effectively deliver high quality, low cost care by cohorting similar patients and implementing evidence-based protocols. Observation patients don't require the same level of care as inpatients, so they're less expensive um, units to operate than inpatient ones. Unfortunately, after our unit opened, I found that our triage system to identify proper patients for the observation unit was flawed. Respiratory season was upon us, and I had significant concern about increased length of stay and inappropriate utilization of OU capacity this ultimately affected patient flow in the entire hospital. I wanted to use a predictive decision tool to assist in making my triage system better in order to get the right patient in the right bed. This would ultimately expand bed capacity by improving appropriate bed utilization, decreasing waste in the system, and delivering higher quality of care for our patients. It was important for us to really understand the operation of placing patients in the OU. The ED physician, after evaluating a patient, contacts the OU physician to determine who is placed in the unit. 
we used an exclusion list to help guide us in determining who was appropriate and inappropriate to place in the OU. But obviously this list was flawed. Therefore, we wanted to create a predictive tool to refine our OU exclusion list to get the right patient in the right bed. The problem Keely described can be framed as an analytics problem and considered within the data analytics lifecycle framework, which is a framework that is often used in analytics classes. The framework consists of six steps, discovery, data preparation, model planning, model building, communication, and operationalization. And even though it is described as a cycle on this slide, in practice, there's a lot of back and forth between the different stages. In the case, we provide resources for instructors to cover the entire life cycle, but they can choose to focus on only some of these stages or specific steps within these stages. And next we'll explain how this can be done. The case itself covers the discovery stage. It's a description of the process that the protagonist goes through in order to frame the problem correctly. So the case it describes the narrative what is going on in the observation unit, and we add a diagram to help the students understand the flow of the patients. As Dr. Dwyer Maskey said in the beginning, the OU is used for two types of patients, the surgical patients and patients that come from the ED. The problem really concerns the patients that come from the ED, so they are two thirds of the patients that arrive to the unit. Out of these two thirds of the patients that arrive to the unit who are non-surgical patients, a large percentage, close to 50%, 45%, flip to inpatient status. Flip means that at some point their status changes from being observation level to inpatient level care. Out of these patients, a quarter end up having to be transferred to an inpatient ward. And that means they incur longer times in the hospital due to various handoffs, using up hospital resources more than that is necessary. But it, it isn't just these 25% who are a problem. In fact, we can think about all the patients who flip are in some way a problem because by occupying the OU, they displace patients who are OU appropriate. And these OU appropriate patients are then placed in inpatient wards where they're taken care of at a higher expense. And they also end up staying in the hospital longer because inpatient wards are not optimized to take care of these patients quickly. Another area that's important to focus on is securing the commitment of important sponsors. This org chart reflects that importance. My chief operating officer and the chair of the Department of Medicine were institutional sponsors of my initiative. This is highlighted in the teaching case and is an important learning opportunity for students to understand in a complex business. In addition, it's important to identify that there were multiple stakeholders involved in choosing the level of care status and placement of observation patients. It was very important for me to engage these groups in the beginning of the project in an important part of change management. As you can see, this includes representatives from the ED, hospitalists, the observation unit, uh, nursing staff, utilization management, and the admitting office. Another important step in the discovery stage is scoping the project before the project is launched, understanding whether completing the project has potential value. So in this case, operations models can be helpful to examine the case. Students can use Little's Law, this can be used in an operations class, can be used to, as an application of Little's Law, where we could see what is the average time that patients spend in the unit, how things will change if fewer patients flip, so that means the patients who are there spend less time in the unit, so the throughput increases. We create these models using Excel spreadsheets. So instructors who are using the case in the analytics class do not have to have application of Little's Law ready. They can use ready-made models that we've supplied with the case. To create a data-driven exclusion list, we created a list of variables potentially useful as predictors as to whether a patient would flip, which can be found in the case. 
we needed to engage experts with domain knowledge. We solicited input, for example, from pharmacy for medications dispensed in the ED. In addition, we contacted social work in helping us determine the patient resident type. This was done in collaboration with many other stakeholders. After the discovery stage, the data preparation stage of the analytics lifecycle involves merging appropriate data sets, dealing with inconsistent or missing data, converting data to correct data types, and a variety of other concepts involved in data cleaning. With the case, we provide instructor resources that we hope are helpful for teaching this very important topic. We provide data, you see a snapshot of the data that looks very much like the data provided to us by the hospital. And we provide code for cleaning as well as assignments that instructors can use with their students, either to guide students through cleaning the data or to create homework assignments or in-class assignments to teach students important concepts about treating missing data and inconsistent data. We also provide a clean file with a case so that if instructors don't want to teach that topic, they can work directly with the clean data for what follows next. The next stage involves model planning and model building. And steps in these stages include data exploration and visualizations, selecting the appropriate target variable, selecting the correct model type, model building and coding, and so on. The resources we provide with the case involve Excel spreadsheets, where pivot tables and summaries and visualizations are used to guide the instructor and the students through analysis of the data that can indicate important variables that could determine the new exclusion list. If instructors then want to build a predictive model, they're also provided with code. But this topic can be taught at two different levels depending on the level of sophistication the students have with predictive analytics techniques. We also spend a lot of time in the teaching note discussing important issues such as selecting the appropriate target variable, selecting the correct model type, building interpretable models. Specifically, we focus on decision trees, which create decision rules that are easier to use in a setting where physicians and decision makers need to understand the recommendations that are being made by the model. Interpreting output and performance evaluation is another very important step of model building. This is where we provide both code to generate the necessary output and also the output itself. If instructors would like to use that to discuss directly with the students. In the image you see on the left, we have a picture of the decision tree that is obtained with the data and the code in the case. And in addition to traditional analysis, such as interpretation of what it means and accuracy measures for the model, we have some tips on guiding very interesting discussions on the appropriateness of using certain variables for prediction. Specifically, as you can see here, one of the important variables in the model is the type of insurance that a patient has. And this can create some very interesting discussions on the use of uh, variables that are social or economic uh, determinants of health, and specifically on how ethical it is to include such variables and predictive models. The next stage of the process is communication, which means presenting summary reports and key findings to different stakeholders. In the case, we provide a table with all the different presentations and communications that Dr. Kelly, the protagonist in the case, had with all the different stakeholders that were described earlier in the case. This creates an opportunity for students to understand the importance of audience-driven multimodal communication and delivering to the different stakeholders the information that they need to know. The final stage of the process is operationalization. Over 80% of analytics projects in industry don't get implemented. And a big part of it is the fact that during the operationalization stage, one needs to, to lead an initiative in change management in an organization to make change happen. So we provide some resources in the case for students to understand how that could work, including we provide some exercises and assignments based on the change management framework by Cotter in 1995, 
We have the org chart, as Keely mentioned earlier, as well as a number of suggestions for in-class exercises uh, to help students learn about this very important part of the process. Some additional topics that could be covered with the case include the role of predictive models and changes to routine operations during a pandemic. Specifically, we have a section in the teaching note where that is discussed because the, the observation unit actually did become the COVID-19 unit during the pandemic. One can also delve deeper into statistical topics. Uh, there's an opportunity to discuss Simpson's paradox and issues with application of common data summary measures as well as a couple of other topics such as ethics in the context of process automation in healthcare or working on interdisciplinary teams. This is a list of the different resources provided with the case. We provide both dirty and clean data files, Excel model files for the operational models, as well as the visualizations and summaries, R code for data cleaning and decision tree building and performance evaluation, as well as a number of different sample lesson teaching plans and assignments both for operations management courses and also for analytics, data science, and machine learning courses at multiple levels, undergraduate, MBA, and master's level. The students like the case. As we explained in our submission, we have done surveys, pre and post surveys with the students. And the interesting finding was that a very large percentage of students found the ethical considerations in using machine learning models the top takeaway from the case. It was also interesting to see that in post case surveys, students were more thoughtful about the selection of variables in predictive and machine learning models. It was very clear that that selection was based on ethical considerations as opposed to simply model and proven metrics. Here's a sample of quotations from the um, post case surveys. And it's not just the students who are excited about this case. As an analytics instructor with background in operations research. I have been very excited to use this case to teach important concepts like data preparation, interpretable machine learning, ethical use of machine learning models, as well as the ability of predictive and prescriptive models to bring value by being used together. In my operations class, I particularly like the discussion that we had around change management issues. So here we are dealing with a case of can think about maybe not such a big process change, expanding a, a list of diagnoses that should exclude patients from the OU. But yet there were so many departments involved in approving this decision and facilitating this decision. So this led to a rich discussion on the students' experience, change management in their organization. How does it compare to what happened here? What approaches work, what approaches do not work. So to me, that was the most exciting part of teaching the case in an operations class. And in healthcare today, we emphasize all three concepts, operations, change management, and predictive and prescriptive models are being integrated into our daily practice. My hospital team and I learned a lot about the value of a robust analytic evaluation to address a very difficult problem. In summary, we believe that our case provides a lot of value by being multidisciplinary, grounded in practice, providing rich context, realistic data, and a variety of instructor resources. We have spent a lot of time putting together valuable resources for our community, and we hope that you will find the case as educational, valuable, and as exciting as we do. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. <laughs>